can't do business with Hitler. We are now at war. There are but two alternatives, total victory or total defeat. There can be no such thing as a military stalemate that would result in the survival of Hitlerism. That is the opinion of a man who knows. Douglas Miller, for 15 years, commercial attaché to the American Embassy in Berlin. Presenting a radio series entitled, You Can't Do Business with Hitler. Episode 12, Money Talk with a German Accent. <laughs> Douglas Miller speaking. Despite the recent anti-Axis hemispheric defense conference in Rio de Janeiro, the Nazi threat to Latin America is still an active menace to the safety of this hemisphere. Not only do Nazi agents operate in this area, but the German population of Latin America, of which there are three and one half million, form a strong economic bloc. These Germans are not mere traveling salesmen. They own the local drug stores, the haberdashery, the restaurants, and when knit into an active group by the Nazis, they wield enormous power in the form of economic pressure. Of all his weapons, Hitler has used the economic weapon to the greatest advantage. Here's how this method has been made to work in Latin America. Brazil, a place of vast distance, few railroads, few roads. Naturally, in Brazil, as in other South American countries, airplane travel is the most important means of communication. Until recently, German airlines completely dominated the continent. And like giant spiders, the Nazis wove a tight web of crisscross airlines over our helpless neighbors to the south. By doing favors for high government officials, the Nazis gained permission to charter certain airlines utilized mainly for fifth column work. Like the trip, senor Foetti. <laughs> si, senor. Very enjoyable, senor. Very. You know, senor, it is not often I have been in an airplane. <laughs> that is good. The man who practically controls air travel in Brazil, and it is not often he has been in the air. <laughs> well, senor, it is it true? Your family, I understand they live in Fortaleza and out of the way place. <laughs> uh, have you never wished there was an airport there so you could visit home more frequently? Fortaleza? Si, senor. Who would bother with an airport there? Perhaps you wonder why I arranged this flight for you, Senor Puerti. It was to show you the beauties of Fortisela from the air. A wonder. Uy, Hermos. Was it scratchy, Senor? I thought you would like it. Moreover, as a favor to you, we are thinking of extending our airlines to Fortisela. Well, Senor Fuerte did us well by granting extension of our service, eh, Herr Gerling? Yeah. Yesterday's was the 35th round trip between Fortesela on the coast and Teresina inland. Ten passengers each trip. That's 350 more Germans we have smuggled in from Germany to carry on the work of departure. What happens when they get to Teresina? They disappear. Mm-hmm. Naturally not. They work in the town. They do good work. What they do? Only the Gestapo, my dear Gerling. Only the Gestapo. If this story seems far-fetched to you, if you need to, read the amazing article entitled Wings for the Trojan Horse, printed in the January 1941 issue of the authoritative magazine Foreign Affairs. Another aspect of Hitler's attempt to tie up the Latin American economy is reflected in the fantastic business deals the Nazis offer South American businessmen. The Nazis do this for two reasons. First, to bring the South American businessman into close, intimate contact with Nazism, even attempting to force him to join and contribute to Nazi fifth column activity. Second, to buy up and store all the strategic materials the Nazis can get their hands on, preventing American purchase. How does this Nazi program work out in actual practice? Listen. Hey, Sebastian. 
Yes, what can I do for you? Godfrey Todd, member of German Trade, Trade Commission at your service. And what is your business, Senor Trump? You are the owner of several mica mines, Nine. You already know that. Now come to the point. The German Embassy has been watching your activities with great interest. We believe you are in a position to make a small contribution to the German Labour Front in Ecuador. Say, 100,000 pesos. To the German Labour Front? Absurd. I'm not the organization. I'm a loyal citizen of Ecuador and no Nazi. This is purely business. In return for the contribution, the German Trade Commission is prepared to purchase all the mica produced by your mine for the next five years. All the mica produced here for the next five years? Well, the American and English blockade. I know, I know, I know, but we are facing this order for delivery after the war. You will build warehouses and store them. I can't give such time as we can take delivery. But do we have no way But to... what? The mica is sold, Nine. What does it matter when delivery is made? The Americans have a saying. I smell a thief. The Americans are suspicious people. We are offering you a perfectly legitimate proposition. A regret, senor, to have to refuse. Senor Sebastian, let me tell you a little story. A sad little story. In Berlin, we have something we call a blacklist. This list is given to the Gestapo. After we win the war, the Gestapo intends to pay visits to people whose names are on the list. You have heard of the Gestapo. Senor, we of Ecuador are renowned for our manners. But I'm losing mine. Now leave these things to... I am only telling you a story, pointing out that it is an easy thing to be a friend of the Ike here, Sebastian. Grabbing the phosphorus. If we do not win the war, nothing will happen to you. The Americans have a good neighbor policy. But when Germany wins, the biggest couple has a long memory. Good day, senor. Wait. You would like to be alive, Herr Sebastian? Michael or murder? I... I can wait an hour. You will wait more than I an hour. I not. The deal will be closed in an hour. But call, senor, you will discover that the Gestapo are the world's greatest salesman. You agree with me, yeah? Need proof? Here's a source you can get your hands on at any library. John Gunther's authoritative book, Inside Latin America. Read for yourself the story of Nazi coercion in Latin America. The Nazis use their economic power in many other ways. They use the buying power of the three and a half million Germans in Latin America as a weight over the heads of Latin American businessmen. And because so many Latin American Germans are in business, they form an effective and powerful lobby. For example, in Brazil. Hello? Senor de Oro speaking. You are Senor de Oro, the publisher? Yes, who is this? My name is Schultz, Heinrich Schultz. Well? Uh, I have noticed that your paper does not carry news from the Transocean News Service. Why is that? Senor, we get our German news from our reliable sources. Lies. I beg your pardon. I said lies. Those other thoughts. I happen to now, know that... Senor de Oro, who could possibly know more about Germany than Transocean, since it is the official German news service? It won't cost you one peso. You mean the official German propaganda service, don't you? Now, Senor de Oro, you are unreasonable. Perhaps you don't understand me. You see, I represent the German businessmen of this city who are advertising your paper. I believe these businessmen contribute 90% of your advertising revenue. You mean that unless I carry Transocean news, the German businessmen will withdraw their advertising? Is that it? Don't put words in my mouth, Senor de Oro. Of course, Germans would prefer to advertise in a paper that prints the truth about the Third Reich. Do I make myself clear, Senor Oro? Yes. I am afraid you do. Aha. Good. A representative of Transocean will be in to see you this afternoon, Senor Oro. Danke, sir. Skeptical? Need proof? Then get hold of a copy of the New York Times for June 27, 1940, and read this story and others like it for yourself. Since the war broke out, the Nazis haven't been able to slip any of their ships through the blockade. So, to maintain their economic prestige in South America and convince South Americans of this invincibility, they have resorted to all kinds of fantastic dodges. Here's their latest trick. 
Ah, Herr Gomez, good, I've been expecting you. Ah, buenas tardes, Senor Krupp. It is a remarkable proposition you made me over the telephone. You brought these goods right through the blockade, eh? Correct. <laughs> right under the eyes of the stupid American Herr Gomez. You appreciate that, yeah? But I thought you Germans were short of raw materials. I read in the papers that... Capitalistic it... lie. Here they are, Senor Gomez. You get the last there. Eh? I hope they play as well as the last shipment I bought from you. How can they help but play like the others? They were made in the same factory. It is well known that German radios are superior to any in the world. Very well. I will take the whole shipment at the price you quoted over the phone. Send me the bill. You can find your way out alive. Uh, but of course. I still don't see how you managed to get through the blockade. Wait till I send this to Juan. <laughs> and be careful. They won't believe it. Good ah. day, Herr Gomez. Where is the Senor? Wait, wait. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are calling me, Herr Krug. Yeah, come here immediately. I have something for you to do. Yeah, what is it, Herr Krug? I want you to change the labels on those radios. Radios? What radios? They are to Oh, yes. They weren't here this morning. No, they won't be here tonight. Now, hurry, change the labels. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. You will find made in Germany labels on the door. Remove the old labels and put these in instead. Yeah, but uh, I do not understand. If the Reich is making radios... The Reich is not making radios. But it is well for the South Americans to think they are. Oh. It is also well for them to think that we bring them through the blockade. It glorifies the Reich. But, but if they did not come from the Reich... Home so. We bought them from the importing houses. Read the labels of the radios. Yeah. Well, what do they say? It says made in the U.S.A. Mad in the USA. A good joke, yeah? Incredible as it may seem, this is exactly what the Nazis are stooping to in Latin America. And even more fantastic, they are getting away with it. If you still need proof, a copy of the New York Times, dated June 30th, 1940, will convince you. But the best evidence of all lies in the words of Adolf Hitler. We shall create a new Germany in South America. It calls for a capable master. With the treasures of their soil, Germany will be rich and great. We shall create a new Germany there. We shall find everything we need. You can... You have been listening to episode 12 in a series entitled, You Can't Do Business with Hitler. This series is based upon the experiences and observations of Douglas Miller, who was for 15 years commercial attaché to the American Embassy in Berlin. If you would like a copy of this script, send us a postcard. Address it, Radio Section, OEM, Washington, D.C. I'll repeat that address, Radio Section, OEM, Washington, D.C. Listen for the 13th program in this series, which is entitled, Work or Die. This transcribed program, written by Elwood Hoffman and directed by Frank Shelford, was brought to you by the radio section of the Office for Emergency Management in Washington. <laughs>